Okay. So my first question is, have you always lived in Augusta, Georgia? Yes. Okay. So was it you were born and raised here? How born and raised in Augusta. So for me, it's the same. I was born and raised in Augusta. Just lived right across the street here. Um, so for us, we live in a two-bedroom, five, sorry, two-story, five-bedroom house. Um, could you tell me what kind of house you live in? I live in a one-story, uh, 2,000 square foot home, four bedrooms, two baths. Um, so have you ever invested in solar, either rooftop solar for your home on your property or as part of a business or as part of a program through your unit? Um, part of, uh, my employer is, um, a project with my employer, um, and it's really for, for lighting, okay. uh, industrial lighting. So do y'all have it in your home or is it like you use um, it the, on only, the only thing we use in our home is for, um, gardening lights. Okay. Uh, but nothing um, on our rooftop. Being a home, your homeowner, correct? Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, being a homeowner, was the option for rooftop solar like ever a decision you thought about? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, just looking at the, some of the sustainability um, projects that uh, my previous employer I was involved with, um, one of the things we look at is rate of return, and usually for it to pay out for us to invest a certain amount of money. Um, we had to get a rate of return within three to five years. Um, when I looked at it for solar back in 1999, we had a house built. Um, the price of the rooftop sales were were so high. So high. Um, the rate of return, I think even back then, I think I was looking at in excess of 20 years, which now looking back, I've been in the house 20 years, but mm-hmm. it wasn't something I was willing to invest, uh, invest that type of um, capital in. Okay. So I'd like to talk a little bit about rooftop solar in general. Um, I'm going to give you a map of the United States. And if you could just mark, circle, or put an X wherever you think rooftop solar is adopted the most in the country. So what makes the areas that you mark different from, say, Georgia? Well, um... You can hold it if you want. Um... I know California is really big on sustainability, um, just some of the things that I've seen. Even um, I've got relatives that live in um, Sacramento, okay. and it's just a uh, sustainability is very big, uh, I think, there. Um, and I'm thinking this is Washington State and Florida, and I'm thinking in those two areas. Um, the company I work, at, work for now is headquarters out of uh, Washington State, and it just seems like we're always talking about ways to be... Uh, environmentally responsible um, and it looks like uh, it just seems like California is just kind of generations ahead of the rest of the country okay. could you tell me just a little bit about the company you work for since you keep saying oh, they okay yeah um, the previous company I worked for that we looked at sustainability was Procter and Gamble um, and the company I work for now is Starbucks okay. and so uh, both companies are real big on sustainability being environmentally responsible, but the, the other thing that we found out, especially with Procter & Gamble, is that um, as we saw utility rates like increase, it really impacted um, our profit margin because um, utility costs became a big uh, big cost for us, and as the variability swung and it went through the roof back in the probably mid-late 90s, then uh, we started looking at other options that we had to explore to say, you know, how can we reduce costs? So does the Starbucks plant up here This have? is the roasting plant, uh, yeah, um, off of Mike Padgett Highway. Yeah, that, the official name of the street is Valencia Way, but it's off of Mike Padgett. Okay. Yeah. Do they have solar out there, or do you know? Um, we have some solar panels and lighting, okay. um, outside lighting. Uh, not a lot of it, but um, there is uh, talk of one way to reduce costs for installing instead of running conduit and wire. Um, you know, let's look at, you know, what would it cost to install solar panels for exterior lighting to get a little bit more light around the place, especially at night. Okay. Um, sorry, I kind of jumped off the map. So back to the map. Um, what kind of people do you think live in those areas that you marked? Um, I think the, uh, I, I guess one thing, I don't know about the annual, the medium income, but I would think that maybe the income is significantly higher than, say, in Georgia, um, so I guess when you look at comparing apples to oranges, uh, they might be able to afford um, the initial investment. 
versus uh, folks from other states. That's just, you know, one of the things that I'm thinking about. And I think the, the thought about uh, the concept of sustainability is extremely huge and probably more prevalent in old states than, say, Georgia. I know we talk about it a lot in the state and different companies. I come from an industrial background, but it just seems like it's almost like breathing in, in other states. So you don't even think about it, you just do it. Where I think you way more feel like in, in the states, you know, how long is it going to pay out, that type thing, versus we're going to do it, and that's it in, in those other states that I talked about. Okay. Um... So, why do you think people in those areas have the most soul on their rooftops? Um, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, uh, is it something that, you know, if the generation before was thinking about it and they did it, then if they're, the next generation probably thinks, hey, I, you know, my folks did it, so I'm going to do it. I think some people see the long-term investment um, and, uh, you know, it's unlimited energy. Um, I think they may view the use of solar power differently than maybe in other areas where when you, when you think about it, now not just the financial piece, but being um, environmentally responsible. And then, you know, also it's when you look at it, uh, we're all, we're, utility costs are going to vary. Um, but, you know, solar energy, it's, it's, when you think about it, it's really unlimited. Um, if you kind of think about the cost if you take the cost part out of it you know why not do it so uh, i think that concept or that that uh that perspective folks in those areas probably think a little differently about it say in the southeast um but um i, I think folks are trying to turn the ship around as far as their initial view it being just expensive but more of you know what are, what am i going to get out of it uh, for the generations to come setting them up for success um, so we're going to do the same thing again, but with a map of Georgia this time. Mm-hmm. So I'll take that one okay. from you. And just mark, circle, wherever okay. you think. I'm thinking these two. Um, okay. Yeah. So what makes those two different from Augusta? Well, I think, uh, for one, um, Atlanta, um, there's a, I think the median income is, is a lot higher. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's some, um, there's a lot of industry in the area, so with a lot of industry, um, I think you have to look at uh, alternative means of energy, and solar would be probably a viable option. Um, Savannah um, is near ports, so again, uh, a pretty significant industry that is going to have to be sustained, uses, probably uses a, a, a certain a large amount of energy. You've got the, the river there, so that's you know, one source of energy, but when you couple that with solar energy, it probably maybe makes the rate of investment or rate of return probably a bit more attractive. That's just, I don't have any data to substantiate mm-hmm. that, but that's just kind of what my initial thought was. Okay. Um, so what kind of people do you think live in those communities? Um, I'm thinking in, in Atlanta, you, you've, you've got a lot of uh, business owners, there's a, there's a lot of business that comes through Atlanta. When you think about the the airport, mm-hmm. um, that probably be a huge way to um, lower utility costs using solar energy. And then in Savannah, um, probably have a lot of uh, agriculture there, but then you also have the shipping lanes and just uh, ways that you could benefit from when you, when you've got business that can support that. I think it's probably more likely to be to be thought about versus um, maybe some other areas that I didn't mention. Okay. Um, so why do you think people in Atlanta and Savannah um, have the most solar on their um, rooftops? Maybe um, uh, a very um, in probably both areas. I would say it's very uh, very diverse uh, population. So I always think that uh, diversity kind of widens your viewpoint. Um, you have a collective uh, accumulative, accumulative thoughts of viewpoints of, of not just one or two or three different demographics. Uh, I know both Savannah and Atlanta, I kind of think of it as a big melting pot culturally. Mm-hmm. And so with different cultures, different backgrounds, you're going to get different thoughts. 
And I always say the beauty of diversity is that you have a multitude of different outlooks and more than one way to more than one way to look at things. So that's kind of what I think. So my next question is, what about your close friends in the state of Georgia? Do they have solar? Um, I have a, a very good friend. He is not. Uh, he doesn't have it yet, but. Uh, he looked significantly uh, at ways to reduce energy costs. Um, the rate of return uh, didn't allow him to, to pursue it, but it is something that he's actively thinking about. Uh, I've got a, another good friend of mine that um, he is actually um, thinking about doing it um, because he sees the payout. He's an electrician, and he's really dug deep into, um, I guess the big thing for him was not the initial payout from the utility uh, cost reduction, but also uh, what would it cost to maintain it? So that was his thoughts was like, you know, how long is this going to last? Uh, what am I going to have to, you know, do to maintain it? How much is it going to cost? Because that all adds into, you know, that's going to, you know, the more you have to maintain it, the more it's going to take away from your savings. So uh, he's kind of sold on it. It's the right thing to do um, from an environmental standpoint and from a a cost effective standpoint so he sold he just hasn't uh, he's building a home and he's talking about um, putting um, installing solar panels on his roof he resides um, about an hour south of here um so now if you don't mind we're going to ask a few questions regarding the role of food in your day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. um so if you could please tell me what your regular day with food looks like so what are your meals and snacks typically look like okay um morning uh is typically coffee maybe some fruit uh toast egg white omelet um that's probably it for um for breakfast snack uh morning snack or midday snack is probably like an energy bar a cliff bar uh, something of that nature lunch uh usually like uh chicken breast and fruit um, some veggies. Dinner is uh, hopefully a little lighter. Um, I try to eat my most in the beginning of the day and work my way and, uh, as the day progresses. I uh, eat a smaller meal. So um, usually a veggie, vegetarian shake or something lean, chicken breast, low carb. Um, maybe and if for a, a night snack, maybe a, a vegetable or fruit smoothie, something like that. Okay. Um. So for me, I'm at home most of the day during the summertime, so I'll just grab something quick out of the kitchen to cook or out of the pantry, and then at night we'll normally either go out to eat or okay. um, cook a big meal at home. Um, so could you tell me what your go-to meal is and why? Um, my go-to meal is probably um, more of a... Uh, vegetable-based, plant-based uh, diet. Um, try to be as less processed as I possibly can. Um, and the reason for that is I, I think uh, eating from the earth uh, versus something that is uh, you put in a microwave uh, that's got a lot of um, preservatives in it. That's something I try to stay away from. Um, one, I think it, it's more nutrient-dense when it's like from the earth. Um, and it hadn't been hadn't been touched by man as far as uh, from a process standpoint. Um, and there's a lot of data out there that says um, your what we call health span, which are the quality years that you're going to live. It's kind of like you got your lifespan, and then you got a health span. And the health span is like you know how many of those years are like quality years. And there's a lot of data that supports uh, eating a plant-based diet. Um, so how often do you cook your own meals? I um, try to cook it at least, uh, um, at least 70-80%. Um, the weekends, I will admit, we splurge. We'll, we'll go out more just from the standpoint quality of life. You know, we want to we get out of the house, and so we're probably more apt to, to eat out. Um, but we also look at um, restaurants, say, like uh, Farmhouse in Augusta. Uh, for alcohol, hollow, even though it's a little bit more expensive on the pricey side. Uh, one of the things that we've seen is that um, the food tastes different because I think it's, they're really, they're really um, passionate and put a lot of uh, work into finding um, 
resources locally, and they really look at it's not like a uh, say a chicken or pork that um, has a lot of uh, hormones in them. Um, they they get them from very uh, environment sustainable farms, um, and and I can tell tell the difference in the food, and my body feels different when I eat from those places. So uh, that's what we try to do. Um, try to stay away from the fast food restaurants because uh, I think there's just a ton of things that aren't really helpful, help healthy for you. Do you know if I know Farmhouse and Frog Hollow are owned by the same people? Yeah. Do they have their own farm that they get it from? Do you know? Well, um, I know um, I know there's a teacher that reside that teaches at Cross Creek that he grows the mushrooms. Okay. Um, and they have certain um, farms that they get them from now. Um, another uh, restaurant, uh, I think it's called Manuel's Bread Cafe, um, they do um, have some, they do have a small, very small farm and they get some of their um, products from, I think for their their eggs, their, um, they have chickens they have, and then I think the milk from the goats they use for the cheese Yeah. Uh, there. So uh, that's another place that I, I, I frequent a lot. The prices are a lot more is higher um, on average for the same thing it's a uh, uh, franchise um, but there's definitely a difference in the quality of the food okay um, so are you the only person in your house that makes the decision about the food purchases for your household no no um, all the family members contribute um, I probably all depends on who actually does the shopping um, if my wife does she knows that there's certain things that that, that I'm probably more likely to not eat. Um, she knows that I look at sodium content, preservatives, that type of stuff. My daughter, she is uh, totally all organic. Uh, she's going to spend a significantly uh, uh, more money on the same type food that, say, my wife would because she's looking for certain things. Um, she's more like apt to shop at a, uh, not a Whole Foods, it's a the Fresh Market, I think is the only one around town. There's another one further out west, but um, she typically shops at those places or at like the city market where everything's locally grown. So how often do you purchase food for your household? Probably twice a, probably twice a week on average. Okay. Um, so if you could paint this picture for me, let's say you're taking a trip to purchase food. What does that look like? Um, <clears throat> uh, that looks like... Um, I'll try to purchase in bulk. I'm buying bulk. Um, cost per unit size is significantly lower. Uh, and uh, since I'm going to eat <clears throat> as much of it as um, that will stay fresh, then I'm probably going to try to buy in bulk. Um, uh, energy bars that that are have a lot of organic material, um, organic ingredients like Cliff Bar, and uh, there's a breakfast bar, another breakfast bar that I that I'll that I'll um, purchase. Um, a lot of fruit, say um, organic grapes, strawberries, uh, kiwi, um, some honeydew melon, uh, some kale from my smoothies, some spinach, uh, egg white um, from uh, I guess chickens that don't uh, aren't don't use hormones in their feeding process, and then um, uh, some wheat bread. Uh, try to get the lowest carb that I can. Not a lot of sugars, not a lot of additives to it, uh, not a lot of preservatives. Uh, and then um, water with, uh, we're trying something new with uh, not, uh, trying to not totally do away with soda, but very little soda. Um, almost uh, non sugar based type drinks um, if we can help it. So that's typically what. Uh, a day, a, a evening at Costco, because uh, they they are kind of they they come across as being res, um, responsible when it comes to the type of food that they offer their consumers. They may have skinless chicken breast, and then they'll have skinless chicken breast that are organic. Uh, so I like to be I like to have that choice when my budget allows, and I'll probably opt for the organic. When it doesn't, I'll probably get the uh, low hormone or no hormone based, just regular um, chicken breast. Okay. Um, so when it comes to feeding your family and <clears throat> yourself, what are some challenges you might face? For example, my family, we have picky eaters, mm -hmm. so it's 
limited on what we'll eat? Um, probably the biggest thing is uh, try to reduce waste. Um, that's probably a big, big ongoing thing right now. And so uh, nothing is probably makes all of us kind of cringe, maybe except for my son, is, uh, is you know, throwing away food because we didn't eat it. Um, and then trying to get everyone on the same page as far as, you know, why are we eating like this? Uh, we don't force uh, our eating habits on each other, uh, but we will try different things. Hey, um, let's try um, uh, let's try a grouper. Let's try flounder baked instead of uh, fried. And so that's been a huge winner for us. And so now um, I don't think eating healthy or eating sustainable, grown, local food is as big as a challenge or a deal as um, some might expect. One of the things that we that we do is we don't use salt um, in our cooking, unless for maybe a pinch of sea salt, but we use a ton of Mrs. and Mrs. Dash uh, and garlic, uh, uh, minced garlic. So that we found out that that adds a, a tremendous amount of flavor, uh, and that allows us to not eat a lot of, uh, you know, really heavy, dense sodium type foods, which is high blood pressure runs prevalent on both sides of my family. So, uh, so far, knock on wood, I hadn't had to take high blood pressure medicine. So at 53, that's pretty, pretty good. Thank you. Okay.